So yesterday, we addressed Abraham's great faith. Today, I want to acknowledge that Abraham was not perfect in his faith. So he, he had that, that great promise from God of having descendants, and yet, as he grew old, his wife remained barren. At some point, him and his wife decided, hey, we can help God out. We, we can help ensure this promise remains true, and his wife offers her servant, her slave girl, Hagar, for Abraham to have a child. Many years later, I, I think we still sometimes think God needs help. That, that we sometimes act in a way that indicates, hey, you know, God needs me to be the one to control this. It's a very ends justify the means mentality. That, that if the ends of what I do, the, the result of what I do is good, the way I get there doesn't matter. And I'm going to tell you I think Scripture speaks against that. that. That this was not God's design. God will say to him, this is not the child I promised you. You took matters into your own hand. And there will be consequences to this. There is now conflict within that family. And, and Abraham he is put in this difficult situation where he is to honor his wife or the mother of his child and the child himself. All these lives hurt, negatively impacted, because they decided instead of waiting for God's promise and for God to work, that they would take matters into their own hands. Eventually, uh, Isaac is born, and, well, Abraham cast Hagar and Ishmael out. The poor mother, not knowing how she can take care of him. Remember, there is no social services back then. You could not get a job if you're a woman. And yet, here's where God's mercy persists, even, even when we have failed. God tells her that this child, well, he will have many descendants as well, just like the promise to Abraham. But here's the difference. He says he will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him, and he will live to the east of all of his brothers. The conflict in the Middle East stems all the way back to this story. That, that people who are Jewish or of Israelite descent, they will say they are part of Isaac's lineage. The other Arabic people will say we are part of the, the Ishmael lineage. And this choice, these consequences remain in our world so many years later. If Abraham had only trusted fully that, that God could do, if Abraham had not stepped into that role, how different this world would be. And I want to encourage us when, when we sense that God needs us to, to stand up for him and we choose to do it in a way that is not honored, not kind, not gentle, not patient, not loving. We are stepping into the role of Abraham there. And there are consequences for that. Right now, I hear people's condemnation uh, of Christians in, in calling us out on hypocrisy because we are very good at criticizing and condemning others with anger and hate and thinking to ourselves that ends justify the means. And I'm going to say to you, they do not. They do not. God wants us to trust he's got this. Stand up, stand up in a way that honors him. And if that means you will be persecuted, mocked, it's okay. God still has it. Be patient. Paul is going to use this story to remind us that 
we are the child of faith. That those who've accepted Christ, uh, they are the child of freedom and of faith. And he juxtaposes that with children that think that the law will save them with children of slavery or the, the Hagar child. He will years later use this as an allegory, not, by the way, to condemn Hagar and Sarah but, or, or Hagar and Ishmael, but simply to remind us there is freedom in Christ. That freedom takes patience. Sometimes that freedom means you might be persecuted against at times, but that freedom is worth it. Make sure your, your behaviors now indicate that you are a child of freedom in Christ that you understand the love God has for you and that you will love other people in that same manner. That you will love them even when they seem unlovable. We, we are the child of promise. Let us wait patiently for God to accomplish his work. Would you pray with me? Father, for the times in which we step over our boundaries, and feel like we need, we need to accomplish your work. Father, help us to be patient. Help us, Father, that, that in all circumstances, Father, that we would be kind and gentle and loving to those around us. That we would be faithful witnesses of the presence you have been and are in our lives. That we would know that in the end, your will, your love and grace will win. That your promises are steadfast. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. And remember, hopefully, for not much longer to remain physically distant, but please, please stay connected. And let us love everybody.